Hello everyone, and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Bold colour palette today, green and gold. Um, I've been waiting to review this for a long time. This has been sat in a cupboard since June, being very slowly drank bit by bit and shared with friends because I wanted honest opinions on it. And it's kind of hard to pour Laphroaig blind because most people know what it is straight away. It's just, it's Laphroaig, you know? So this is the 10 year old sherry cask. It's 48% alcohol. I would assume at that strength, it is non-chill filtered because why would you chill filter at 48%? Natural colouring, no idea, but it is a beautiful kind of shade of like orange and pink. It's got this really nice kind of hue to it. I think burnt orange, most people would roll with that, or like golden syrup or something. But a beautiful colour. And I've been slowly falling in love with this bottle bit by bit. I know peated whiskey isn't for everyone. It is a shame because it is fun. I remember, remember my first ever experience of Laphroaig like it was yesterday and I remember thinking to myself at the young old age of 18, why would anyone want to drink that? And it was Laphroaig 10. And now I probably own more versions of Laphroaig and Lagavulin and Kalila and Highland Park and Talisker than I own other whiskies, maybe except bourbon. But certainly in terms of Scotch whisky, I own more peated stuff than unpeated stuff. And this has gone straight to the top of the tree because I really enjoy it. Outside of Laphroaig 10 and Laphroaig Select, the entire range now is 48%, which is wonderful, minus the cash strength. I think this year's version is like 57.9. Um, regarding the whiskey, for a portion of this product, for the full 10 years has been sat in second fill Oloroso hogsheads, and then a portion of the whiskey has been finished for 18 months in first fill Oloroso hogsheads. It's a lot of sherry. It's not something Laphroaig are really known for. They've done some Cardius releases with sherry influences, but nothing which has sat that long in sherry. Maybe some of the 25 year olds, maybe some of the 30 year olds, I wouldn't know. I've only tried a, a 25 year old Laphroaig once. I loved it. Can't really afford to spend 400 pounds on that right now. Whereas this is 65, bit of a bargain in my mind, especially versus some of its competition. But taste, smell, what's going on? Yeah, it's like smelling a Spanish ashtray. All the sherry you could want. And I tiptoe around sherry, said it loads of times. I fall in and out of love with this stuff constantly, but I don't when it's in peated whiskey. I love Ardbegugadal. I love Lagavulin 16. Um, some of the peated Bunnahavans, like the Moyne Oloroso from back in the day, one of the best whiskies I've ever tried. Truly outstanding whiskey. And when sherry is involved with peat, I just think it's a marriage made in heaven. And with this particular distillery, I think it works to like a ridiculous degree. Outside of the Spanish ashtray, we have this nice contrast of like really dry raisin, like super dry. Chili, like freshly cut red chili when it's on your hands and you kind of can't get the smell off. The dark chocolate thing, I don't want to give a percentage because that's just too intense, but it's this weird like cross of like milk into dark chocolate. There's like a percentage level, which I can't quite figure out. The TCP iodine -y thing is there, but it's been very subdued by the sweetness of the sherry in a way which is quite welcoming because as much as I enjoy Laphroaig 10 and its TCP-ness, um, to tone it down a bit and to send it to the back just to give it like a a background role, as you were like a supporting role versus the intensity of the sherry influence. Cherry, plum, it's like a little bit of red apple. Could honestly smell it for days. Um, not a cigar smoker, dad used to do, um, my father used to like do roll ups with golden Virginia tobacco and he used to smoke it when he let the dog out. And it, there's a very reminiscent smell there. But also cigar smoke, quite savory, like richer, more in depth. I could honestly smell that for days. That's, um, there's a lot going on there. There's also like an Angostura bitters thing. 
um, that oranginess, that kind of bitter, like gentian root. And licorice too, a bit of black licorice, just sitting in the background. Really could just smell that for hours. There's there's quite a lot going on the no on the nose of that. Ooh, right. Another very specific tasting note. If you've ever had those peanuts, which are coated in like that weird chili outer coating, there's tons of that going on here. The dryness of a peanut, and that kind of very, very subtle sweetness it has. And, well, backed up with the dryness. And then you've got that gently warming, soft red chili thing. And it's almost like circling around the mouth. It goes back and forth and back and forth. The chocolate's gone, a lot of the sweetness is gone, which I actually don't mind because I'd rather have it on the nose than on the palate. Replaced with it, mixed peppercorns, like it's kind of sweet and it's a bit lemony, but it's also kind of spicy at the same time, but you can handle it, it's not overbearing. Like um, fresh sea salt, I've become obsessed with like Maldon or Malden sea salt comes in like this little white box and I've been putting it literally on everything because it's the best salt I've ever tried. That coastal influence, like classic Laphroaig. Yeah, there's like a, there's a cigarette butt end of a cigar thing going on with it. But if you, if you enjoy Laphroaig, you kind of, you want that, right? That's like a, a nostalgic element to it. As I talk to you, the chocolate thing is coming around. There's almost a butterscotch note in it as well. Because some of it has spent time in bourbon casks too. And that is really subtly coming through at the end. There's like this little bit of Werther's original. I was going to say coconut, but it's not. It's more just like, like a, a, a desiccated something. You could maybe even call it just barley. Tons. Tons of stuff going on. Maybe the sweetness is coming back now. Toffee, sweeter cigar smoke, like more Havana cigar smoke. The licorice things there again. The smell of like Angostura bitters is running through my palate. Bittersweet orange, orange pith. Almost like a rum quality to it. There's almost like a, a very subtle molassesy brown sugar thing. I think that's the longest I've spent talking about the taste and the smell of a whiskey for quite a long time. As you can tell, I quite enjoy this. Um, this bottle was actually a gift. It was gifted to me by a friend uh, for my birthday. And I must say there's another one sat at home just waiting to be opened. I really enjoy this, like a lot, a really a lot. And I've been waiting for Lafroy to do something with sherry that was affordable and it's finally here. So, as a result, Laphroaig 10 Sherry Cask is going to walk with a 10. I don't think I've been that impressed by a standard Laphroaig release in a long time. We've reviewed some of the cash strength stuff and we've given them pretty decent scores, like nines, maybe even nines and a, nine and a half. Because um, the, the, the cash strength releases have all this really unknown sweetness compared to regular Laphroaig 10. I think that is absolutely dynamite. I really do. And if you like peated whiskey and you like sherry cask stuff, I would say, for some reason, in the UK at the minute, Lagavulin 16 is quite hard to get. There's only, I think, two websites listing it. Um, that is a perfect alternative. Yes, it's not as old, but I would argue it's actually got more going on. I need to get a bottle of Lagavulin 16 and review it on the channel because we haven't reviewed it in, I think, eight years. I think it was like the second or third review that Joe did on this channel. So I'll get one of those. But I'm giving that a 10. I think it's outrageously good. It's affordable. It's got an amazing flavor profile. 
If you don't like peated whiskey, I apologize. You're probably just gonna like not understand this review at all. Um, but it is that good. It just, it really is. So thank you all for watching. I think some of you might agree. Some of you might not. That's the first 10 of the year. And I was getting a little bit worried in all honesty that we weren't gonna get one this year just due to the situations of things being bottled and releases being delayed and stuff. I, I was quite panicky that nothing would reach that scale. But that's delicious. You can pretty much pick it up, I think, anywhere in the world. And uh, yeah, if that doesn't make something a 10 out of 10, I don't know what does, really. But thank you all for watching. I've gone on a little bit. Um, that's Lafroy 10 Sherry Cask. That's a 10 from me. And I will see you all next week. Cheers.